Thank you, Sarun, for the nice introduction. Uh, as we had discussed in the beginning, that in India, it basically is a developing nation, so we don't have a standardized uh, fellowship or a training program for residents. So here comes the here comes the advantage of giving these exams, which are standardized. And uh, you know, specialists or consultants of particular fields have sent back and made these exams, and they are very uh, well oriented. And secondly, as already discussed, that you know, you have to set yourself apart from the crowd. How do you do it? You have you get the edge from uh, after uh, giving these exams. So coming on to the national one, I will be discussing only the common ones. The first one is the DNB and. Uh, 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 normally what we give is after the MDMS exam, we give a secondary DNB exam, it is similar to uh, our MDMS exams, similar pattern. So as soon as you finish your MDMS exam, as fresh as you are, as they say, you strike the iron hot and then you get the best results. So at that time you should give it and it's uh, the course is similar to MDMS, so there's nothing to worry. And advantage is that if you get an additional degree and secondly it's MCI recognized. <coughs> The second coming on to the FAICO, uh, this is the Fellow All India Collegium of Ophthalmology which was initiated by AIOS in 2010 and this is the only super specialty exam uh, in the country. So there are nine uh, super specialities and uh, a person can give a maximum of two super specialties and uh, that is also one by one and not together. Uh, for this, at least you should have a uh, recognized MDMS DMB degree. After that, you should have at least one year of experience in the post graduation to in the particular field to give it uh, in that field and should be an uh, AIS member. And the rest of the details are given on the website. Uh, this exam is held annually, has a theory as well as a practical part. After clearing the theory, only you can go ahead for the practical part. And uh, the fees is around five thousand, which is which can be given, I think, by most of us. Uh, coming on to the international one, uh, uh, as uh, it was discussed earlier, the FICO exam. It has three parts and uh, it, this is an initiative by the International Council of Ophthalmology. So the first part is the basic sciences which you can give at the end of the first year or the beginning of the second year when one is well read with the basic sciences, is confident and can uh, along with that study uh, uh, MCQs by John Ferris. The second part is the clinical sciences. This ideally should be given by the end of the third year when you are actually preparing for your exams because that time you have actually studied uh, ophthalmology as a whole and you are uh, confident enough to uh, apply the clinical knowledge. So you, uh, apart from reading the theory, you can read the MEI review manual by the Lampkins for MCQs. So part 3 is advanced clinical sciences. The important thing is that it is a negative marking. So uh, you know after 6 months, ideally, uh, uh, in the part 2 or uh, after 1 year, because the fresher the knowledge, the better it is. You just need to revise what you had done and you are more clinically confident by this time and uh, you can answer the questions uh, also. Important thing to note here is that uh, because India is a developing nation, there is a fee subsidy and uh, the fee is uh, re reduced by 40 to 50 percent if you give, give it in groups. So I would suggest that. And the success rate is uh, fair enough. Part 1 is fine. You, the most uh, important uh, uh, problem here is in the part 3 where negative marking is there and uh, I have seen around 30 to 40 percent uh, do fail in the because of this negative marking. So you should be very uh, clear with that. And this exam is held annually and the rest of the information is given on the website. The, what is the advantage of this? Uh, the existence of an international exam, especially which is you know made by the ICO, uh, who are the examiners of London, and they assess the performance of the ophthalmologist with, with respect to a uniform standard. So you are you know raised to a global standard, and as I, I told before also, they grant three months as well as twelve months fellowship, which is with a very good fund uh, and. Um, it, it can be done um, and they also prefer candidates who have completed the ICO exam. This ICO degree is recognized in Asia and European countries. However, it is not MCI recognized. Uh, the, sec the second exam is the FRCS, which is the Fellow of Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons. Uh, you must have heard of FRCS Glasgow, Edinburgh or FRC of Thermology, but I would be discussing only Glasgow because this is the only exam which can, which can be given uh, while sitting in India, for FRCS Edinburgh and FRC uh, FRC off, you need to go overseas and give the exam, which probably is not um, suitable for many of us. So the part one is similar to that of FICU part one, basic sciences. Part two has an MCQ and a theory. 
uh, but the important thing here is that uh, for an, to be eligible you need a five years experience in ophthalmology. So only uh, by the end of the third year of SR ship or the, by the end of the fellowship you can uh, appear for this. Uh, and uh, if you have already cleared part one and part two of FICO, you are exempted for the MCQ, you only get the theory. Uh, and uh, the part three is uh, mainly a viva and a OSCE. Uh, which, and this should be given six months to one year later uh, uh, after fin finishing the part two. The idea being that you have the knowledge is fresh, you just need to revise it and give it as early as possible before uh, you, you know, have it, it, uh, the, there's a lot of time lag. So for uh, the, the study material in the part two is mainly clinical sciences, MCQ by uh, either Lamkin or MCQ by Professor Chua. He has his own website, you can go ahead and uh, see it. And uh, uh, for medical emergencies, you can use the Oxford Handbook. For part three, especially for examination, you need to read examination techniques by Professor Jua, and uh, uh, the handbook can be revised again. The success rate of part one uh, is good, but part two, it's especially the theory part, I think 30% there is a failure rate. And the toughest out of the three is part three, but there's a 40 to 50% um, uh, pass percentage. So you need to be really careful during for the part three when you give. You need really need to plan it. This exam is held biannually, and advantages is that it is recognized in Europe, Asian, and Middle Eastern countries. It is also recognized in the MCI, and you become a member of the FRCS, and you are eligible for various fellowships and grants, with the, which they keep mailing you and informing you this is the grant, this is the fellowship. So again, this raises you to a global standard. It's a global platform. Uh, it you know increases your CV, so especially when you want to go to fellowships abroad, all these things help you. And um, so, how to go out? So there, there should be proper planning. You should at least start three to six months before preparing uh, or before you know actually uh, you uh, give the exam through the website, through your seniors, professionals, colleagues. Uh, you should know what is the general format of the exam, when to give the when to fill the application, when to actually give the exam, start acquiring the study material. And uh, as we are uh, all, uh, we are all MBBS students. We know how we had cracked the theory, and so the same holds true. But uh, for these exams, I think discussion base is very important. You need to do case-based discussions, topic-based discussions, discuss with your seniors, juniors, colleagues, and you, uh, because all these things help you with viva hosts and OSCE. So tips for viva hosts. Uh, this is very important for the part three of FRCS uh, because this is the rating factor. So there are many verbal as well as non-verbal um, features that contribute to the success. So in the verbal, you need to be polite, respectful. There should be a clear speech. Then when the question is asked, you should have a cost think, speak model. So you just don't rattle off when the examiner is like, what is the cause of this? You need to pause, think and then speak. And in the non-verbal non uh, behaviors, you need to have a good eye contact. You need to smile. You should have a good posture. You should be comfortable. <coughs> the professional appearance, you should be confident, non injurious So most important thing during the exam is to uh, put effort on the non-verbal behaviors which we totally miss out because of the exam tension. Then you, you need to keep, you know, uh, regu regularly practicing viral courses with your colleagues, with your juniors and lastly you should also have a self-recorded video analysis on to how you perform. So the last thing I would say that fellowship exam helps one one, to grow as a clinician or as, an, as an ophthalmologist uh, and, uh, it, uh, and no exam can be cracked without good guidance, hard work and luck. So I wish all of you all the best and thank you for the patient listening.